Well, hi, everyone. I'm Adam, and I'm from Grand Haven. I'm here along with Ariana from West Ottawa, Meredith from Hamilton, Asenia from Holland, and David from Zealand East. So Magna is a glass manufacturer who finishes prefabricated glass that is already made and tempered from their glass supplier. An example of what Magna does is they add the silver trimming along the edge, and they also put the silk screening on the back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, just to give a little history, Magna bought out Donley in 2002, and this branch of Magna, which is worth almost $250 million, uh, has helped Magna to grow itself as a company to almost $29 billion, and they are completely debt-free. And usually, uh, just to give a thing, Magna usually produces things like car windows, sunroofs, and washing machine lids, and they send those things to their respective customers, Ford, and Alpha, and Whirlpool. And usually Magna launches about three to four new product lines each year, but in the coming year, they are launching 17. With this outstanding number, Magna's feeling a lot of pressure from their customers, and they're starting to allocate a lot of pressure on their suppliers. So with that, all right. Magna is under a lot of pressure throughout their entire organization. They are unable to get the glass they need from their suppliers on time. This results in employees having to work weekends and one to, sometimes one to two months without a break. When Magna can't get the glass to the car companies on time, they can receive excessive fines, ranging from $20,000 to $30,000 per minute. In five minutes, you can buy an average home, which leads us to our driving question of, how, How does Magna solve our glass supply issue? What we thought was an originally simple solution we've learned is somewhat complicated. Over the last two weeks, we've had to deal with a number of constraints. One, the we have to stay with our glass supply company due to past relations with them, and finding a new one would take a lot of time, energy, and could be a major problem for Magna. That didn't work out. Two. The glass company is hesitant to invest due to the economic downturn a couple years ago. Three, as you can see, Magna is already growing. They're ready to invest and produce with the 17 new product lines. But even though they're already behind on their glass with the three to four. And lastly, you're probably wondering why doesn't Magna just make their own glass? That seems like the simplest solution. Well, it would take over $50 million just to buy the machinery for that. That's not including the glass supplies or the employees that you'd have to hire and then train. Now Meredith will take it away. Now I'll be talking about why a problem matter matters and who it affects. First of all, it mainly affects the employees. Say on Wednesday they come to work, but now they come to work and they have no, the glass supply is not there. So they, can, they get sent home, and now they're mandatory to work on the weekends. This makes employees stressed and frustrated. For example, we were on the floor one day, and a group of workers coming from break told us, um, run while you still can, thinking we, were, <laughs> thinking we were new hirees getting a tour. They feel this way because of the mandatory weekend shifts. Due to the inconsistent work schedule, Employees miss their kids' birthdays, the kids' birthdays, soccer and baseball games, family reunions, and camping trips. Their personal lives are being shoved aside because they're required to work all the overtime. And now, before Adam and David talk about solution, here's a quick video from our employees. Um, the worst thing I ever missed was with my family when I'm scheduled to work overtime? Uh, family outings on the weekends, like camping trips, because yeah. I usually get mandatory to not. The thing that I miss the most is probably family time where we're here all the time on the weekend. And so now, our solution to this problem is actually a three step solution. The first part is where we have to strengthen communications with the glass supplier. What we would do there is that we would make sure that all departments of Magna have clear, quick, and concise contact with the classified company. We could also send a team over there with a capacity analysis report. What that is is that they, the glass suppliers fill it out and 
to say, okay, we can produce this many glass in this lot of time. If they can't, then our team is there to help them hash out the weak links, and therefore Magna and the glass supply company will be working hand in hand. Continuing with the first step of our solution, we've come to understand that Magna is paying their glass supplier in around 45 to 60 days. If they could induce this time to 30 days or less, which is the average time of getting payments, Magna, it, the glass supplier will almost, almost guarantee a positive response, whether this is sending Magna more glass or prioritizing them over other tier one suppliers. As well, Magna can provide a short-term performance bonus if the suppliers at the beginning are consistently getting their glass in on time and in the full amount requested. Along with that, a, a yearly survey can be implemented, an anonymous survey, that the suppliers can take to let Magna know how they are feeling about the communication between both of them and what can be done to improve that. So that is always at the top level that it can be. And since Magna needs to communicate well between themselves and their glass supplier, Magna also needs to communicate well between them and their employees. One possible way of doing this is changing around the work schedule to fight the overtime. A possible solution would to have a portion of the workers work Monday through Friday and have the other portion work Wednesday through Sunday. This would ensure that there are employees working at Magna every day of the week for every shift and eventually in the long run could help to guarantee a few days off for each employee. So now the second part of our solution is actually more than the most main part. We'll be, Magna will be having a joint venture with the glass supply company. Now, what a joint venture, basically what we're saying is that Magna is going to invest money into the glass supply company because the glass supply company was hesitant to expand, as Ariana said, and so when they do that, they can create a contract and they'll be sharing the risks. In that contract, Magna could be saying, okay, if you don't supply us with the proper glass that we need or uh, don't give us the right amount, then we can go in there and we can help you uh, supply our own glass only our own glass too, so therefore they would be helping out to make their own project. The third and final step for our solution is have Magna either buy the supplier or heavily invest in them and then vertically integrate both of the companies together. Now, on a separate note dealing with employee morale, because we've noticed that this is also quite a problem due to the glass supply issue, there's a couple things that we can do to increase the dynamic of the workplace at Magna. The first of these is to have a barbecue four times a year and where the employees can bring their families to the workplace and they can eat with them and show their families what they actually do while they're working. As well, we can bring in a lot of mini perks for the employees to help just increase their overall happiness. Some of these could include things like bringing in a Dr. Scholl's like machine, so everyone has orthopedics, so no one's cramping up while they're working. And finally, we can repurpose the break rooms so that they're a more comfortable and a usable environment for every employee during their break time. With that, Cindy? So I will be discussing why this is such a big issue. Consider what it would look like if one or all three of these solutions worked. Workers would have a consistent schedule, Magna meets the demands of their customers, and the overall stress goes down and the morale of the company goes up. Now, we firmly believe that it's riskier for Magna to stay the same than it would be for them trying one of our solutions. Now, when we think of the company, we often just think of the logo, but what some people sometimes seem to forget is that it's the employees that truly set apart a company from another. Now, whether you work first shift on the line, on the purchasing team, as a, er, in human resources, you're all feeling the stress. So if this problem were solved, all of these jobs would be easier. There's no more leaving midweek, working weekends, answering late night phone calls, or even answering emails during your vacation. Um, and with all the lines in the company running how they're supposed to, um, there is no more fines when shipments are late for delivery. Magna gets the supplies that they need, and the customers get their final product out on time. Now with that, I'll leave it for David to close this off. So, for now, in the conclusion, the status quo is not working. Change is necessary now. And with change also comes fear. But I know Magna can overcome this fear with our solution. And with that, we would like to Thank everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, Magna and the IT.
Um, I'll start you guys off with some questions uh, since Jason gave us the, the go ahead here. Um, I really, really a, enjoyed all of your um, the visuals. They were great. And I really appreciated the fact that you took what could just be seen as um, kind of a supply chain issue and really looked at both the, the human component of it and how it affects that. But to, to jump back a little bit, one of the things you mentioned in your solutions was about um, the payment turnaround time and that, that the payment turnaround looked like it was maybe one and a half times as slow as what the average would be. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you learned with this? Are you, how, how is that, uh, is that affecting the um, relationship between the two companies? It's not necessarily hindering it to the point where it's slowing down like the capacity of the glass being brought in. Okay. But we've learned that a lot of major businesses, when they're getting paid within 30 days, mm -hmm. they're generally a lot happier with the company. Mm -hmm. So if they can change it to 30 days and become happier with Magna, it could just help maybe a little bit of the problem. Because every bit counts. Yeah. Thank you. Mine's going to be a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I've been thinking about this. Stop all it up. I know. <laughs> uh, how'd you guys determine the overall cost of this problem? Because you have turnover, right? You also have worker morale. You also have the the late fees from the from the end product. Um, what's the overall arching cost? And then how did you take that cost and and look at the risk on your solutions? So there's like a twofold. So question, I guess I can answer this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why we came up with a step solution is that we weren't actually informed of what the glass supplier was. So for getting exact numbers, we were kind of hindered there, which was a bummer. But the reason why we chose a three-part solution is that the first part would cost virtually nothing to increase communication. The second part would only cost thousands of dollars as they're investing and sending people over to create the joint venture. And the third part is where the big money comes in, which would be buying the supplier or heavily investing. And that, could, that would be well in the millions. But we can't give you an exact number just because of that concern that we've had. We did learn the fines though. We did a series of interviews with people at the company and we were able to get a lot of information from that. One, sol that Sorry. <laughs> One solution you uh, had and it I think it was as part of the communication um, with su the supplier but it mentioned this, this changing the shifts from Monday through Friday and then adding Wednesday through Sunday. How feasible do you think that is based on like the HR department's input. Back when Magna was still with Donnelly or when they bought Donnelly, Donnelly actually used that format. So it, we do know it has worked in the past. Magna just hasn't tried it yet to an extent. And we, we know that if they do that, or are hoping that if they do that, they could guarantee some weekends off for the employees. We did talk with an HR there, and she said that it was very feasible. And we would switch the Monday through Friday and Wednesday through Sunday every two weeks. That way, it would just create a better way so everyone's not forcing overtime on the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, you, you put up at one point the, uh, this has to do with the people issue, and they said run before you <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought that was that was great. And then later you talked about how the brand, you didn't say brand, but the brand, Magna, is really the people, it's not the company, mm -hmm. which is very real. Does Magna currently have let's say it's employee base, would they would you call that negative brand equity or positive brand equity with the employees? Probably negative. They're very frustrated. Not like all the way so it's one side, but if it was like a continuum, it'd probably be more on the negative side. Like a 60-40 kind of deal. And that changes with the shifts. Mm -hmm. The first shift is very, like 80 people don't like it, 8% don't like it, 80, 20, and then 20 are okay. But no one's all right with the problem. So people aren't going to pick up the Magna hat and want to wear it all day long and at night with their family, probably? Probably not. We found that the third shift workers are more, ha like, they're more okay. successful with, like, getting all their goals done because they're trying to get to They're the younger workers, okay. so they still have that drive, while yeah. the first and second are, like, more experienced, so they're not as 
happy to be there. We yeah. also experienced when it was like when Downley was there too. So to answer your question overall, they probably wouldn't pick up a bag and a hat. No, <laughs> I mean, probably maybe, not. But maybe at the barbecue, but. <laughs> <laughs> or the barbecue, yeah. Oh, yeah. but not uh, continuing. No. I mean, that's not a, a just a, it's a, it's a very insightful thing to equate people with brand. Mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, I, I, I'm sitting here thinking, y you recommended what I would call some major business planning things. How did you do the, enough research to get to that solution? What did, what did you do in your research? How did you go about it? Interviews. We, we had a, lot of, a lot of people come in and talk to us. And at the very beginning, we were very broad with our thinking. But as we narrowed it down, we got to very, some, like, very specific point of views and very like, specific stuff. Before the people came in for an interview, we had a list of questions to ask them. And then when they gave their thoughts and input on that, we kind of took that into account, what they seemed to like, dislike, that came to our solution. What's the risk behind having the new work schedules? The risk is probably that it doesn't work out and maybe it could actually hinder employee morale other than help it. But the way it is right now, I would, I would be very confident in saying that I think it would help. It's mm -hmm. definitely worth a shot. Yeah. They can't really, there's not a lot of place to get any worse with the employee morale. So with that, we're going to have to close up for Magna, but let's give it up one more time for Team Magna.